Hello, everybody. Welcome to our lesson today. Vlad, hi. I see we also have Eric with us, Daria, Nirvana, Panisa, Amal, Hend, Nirvana, John, and I'm sure other people will join us too. I see Omar has just joined us. Welcome, everybody. So today we're talking about rooms and things that you can find in your house. So we're going to talk about household objects, different rooms in your house and different objects or things that you can find in your house. So I think it'll be really useful because everybody has stuff in their house, right? Now, maybe that's where we should start the lesson today. What's the difference between things, objects, and stuff, right? So what's the difference between these different words? Adrian, hi, welcome. Uh, so, yeah, so first of all... Hello, welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Great. So first of all, uh, things, the word thing. A thing can be any thing right lots of different things there's not another word that that is like things uh because it can be about any object any item any anything that we can touch uh we might call a thing and even things that we cannot touch like love or freedom abstract ideas. They can also be things. So you might hear somebody say, uh, love is a difficult thing. And this means it's a difficult concept. It's a difficult idea. So ideas can be things. Concepts can, can be things, but also physical items or physical objects can be things phone can be a thing microphone hoodie or jacket can be a thing right these are all things um another mistake that i hear from a lot of people is sometimes people think that the word thing is not a correct word to use that's not right the word thing is not bad. It, it It's not too simple. It's not, it doesn't mean that you're stupid. If you say the word thing, I have this thing in my hand. That's okay. You can use the word thing. Yes, we have other words to talk about these things, but the word thing can describe anything. So, uh, so that's first. Second, <clears throat> the word stuff. What's the difference between things and stuff? Well, things, you can count. You can count things. One thing, two things, three things. But the word stuff, you cannot count. This is the difference. So I can say, I have a lot of stuff in my room. Or I can say, I have a lot of things in my room. It's the same, the same idea. But when we say the word stuff, we cannot count it. So we, we never, never, never say, I have three things. Uh, sorry, <laughs> we can say three things. We never say three stuffs. Right? We never say that. We can never say three stuffs. We can say three things. But the word stuff, we can't count it. So we just say the word stuff. We can say some stuff and we can say some things. But we cannot count how many stuffs. We, we can't say that. There's no word stuffs about 
things like this. So, so that's the difference between things and stuff. Today, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, a lot of things. And specifically, we're going to talk about things that you find in your house and rooms in your house. So uh, in the chat, maybe you can tell me, what are the different rooms that you have in your house? What are the different rooms that you have in your house? Just write it in the chat and tell me. And I'll tell you a little bit about my house. So this room that I'm in now, the room you see in a lot of my videos and lessons, this is my office. So I have an office. I have a special room where I work. This is my office. Um, good. In the chat, I see bedroom, living room, kitchen. Good. Maybe uh, in I, I know in in um, when I lived in some other countries, usually apartments didn't have the next room that I'm going to talk about. But in most houses in the United States, we have a dining room. Dining room. The dining room is a special room where you eat the food. <laughs> so you make the food in the kitchen. You eat the food in the dining room. Sometimes it's a different room, sometimes even with a door. But in many houses, this is one big room. And part of the room is the kitchen and part of the room is the dining room. Now, sometimes it's not a different room, right? Like I said, maybe it's one big room. And so sometimes people don't call it the dining room. Sometimes they call it the dining area. So they might say, let's go to the dining area. Or they might say, let's go to the dining room. Great. I see some more uh, rooms that people have written here. Vlad wrote nursery. The nursery. Yeah. So a nursery is a special room for a small baby. For a baby. Special room for a baby. The nursery. Why is it called the nursery? Well, there's a verb, to nurse. Maybe you know a noun, a person. Maybe you know a person who's called a nurse. This is a person who works at a hospital or in a doctor's office. Usually we think that this person is a woman, but today men and women are nurses. Um, and a nurse is not a doctor, but it's the person who helps the doctor, right? Who does some of the basic things that you need to do at a hospital or at a doctor's office. And so, uh, so this is a nurse, but there's also a verb to nurse, to nurse. And this can mean two things. Um, for example, if you're very sick, very ill, then someone might say, we need to nurse him back to health. Like to make him healthy means to give him food, give him water, give him maybe some vitamins or, or things that he needs to be healthy, to nurse someone back to health. But the other meaning of the verb to nurse, this is about mothers. Mothers feed small babies, sometimes with their breast or sometimes with a bottle, right? A bottle of milk. And the baby eats this and is healthy. So this is to nurse. Uh, so if you see a mother feeding her baby, you can say that she is nursing. She is nursing the baby. 
So this is probably why we call this room the nursery, the special room for taking care of the small baby. Yeah. Adrian wrote another uh, another word in here. Wardrobe. Wardrobe. And sometimes we we call it a wardrobe and sometimes we call this a closet. A closet. So for example, in my office there's a closet and I put clothes in there. A closet or a wardrobe is a place where you keep your clothes a special room. Now, a closet usually is not a room, but in some big houses, there's a, a special room to keep the clothes, to put the clothes, to hang the clothes. And so someone might call this a wardrobe, or they might call it a walk-in closet. A walk-in closet, a closet that you can walk into because it's so big, right? Um, in my in in my bedroom, I have a walk-in closet, but all but my wife keeps all of her clothes there. I keep my clothes in the office because <laughs> uh, I don't have so many. You probably noticed I wear the same clothes all the time. Um. <laughs> uh, so, okay, there might also be a balcony, a balcony, you probably know what that is. And a balcony is an area outside. It's not in your house, but it's outside of your house. It's on the second floor or third floor. You go outside and there's a small space where you can sit and maybe watch the sun rise or sunset, a balcony. It's on the second floor or the third floor. It's above the ground. It's above, right? Because on the first floor, there might be a different area. There might be a different room outside of your house. If it's on the first floor, we don't call it the balcony. If it's on the first floor, we have a few different words we can say. We can call it the porch or we can call it the veranda, or we can call it a terrace. There's a few different words we can we can say, or or maybe the patio. Or when I lived in Hawaii, they call it the lanai. All of these words are are really the same thing. It's the outside area that's connected to your house, but it's not inside, right? Um, and then sometimes people have this area in the front of their house and in the back of their house. And so you might say, let's go to the front porch, or you might say, let's go to the back porch, the front porch or back porch, if it's in the front of the house or the back of the house. All right. Um, Hend wrote dressing room, dressing room. So usually in your house, we call this place with all of the clothes a closet, or some people might call it a wardrobe. I don't, I don't say wardrobe, but I know that some other English speakers do. In American English, we usually say closet, but a, a dressing room is usually a special room in a shop. Like when you go to buy clothes at a shop, there's a there's a place where you try on the clothes. You look in the mirror. Oh, I look good in this. I'll buy it. Right. This is the the dressing room. And so you can ask someone in the shop. Where's the dressing room? Some people might also call it the fitting room, the fitting room, dressing room or fitting room. And yeah, great. Oh, good. We forgot one. And Gadir wrote this one, the garage, 
the garage. A garage is usually a place where you keep your car, right? You can park your car inside of this small room. Um, it's connected to the house, but it's not inside the house. Usually very hot in there. Uh, and maybe you keep your car in the garage, or maybe you just have lots of stuff, lots of different things in your garage. A lot of the people who I know here in the United States, they just have lots of different stuff in the garage and they can't put their car in there because it's full of stuff. Um, I don't like that. I try to keep my garage empty. Uh, good. There's another room that we didn't talk about. The basement. The basement. So is the basement on top of your house or under your house? What do you think? Yeah, John. Yeah. Under. It's under your house. So usually you have to go down some stairs, down some steps to go to the basement. And it's different in different houses, but usually a basement is a little dark. Maybe it doesn't have um, some air conditioning or or something that the that that the rest of the house has. So it's not a place that people usually live. In some houses, it is. In some houses, they have a bedroom there or something like that. Um, great. Another word that we might use is cellar. The cellar is another room that might be under underground. So uh, a cellar is like a basement, but usually if you call it a cellar, it means that you have something that you keep, something special you keep there, like a wine cellar, people who have lots of bottles of wine. They might have a special room under the house to keep this wine, a cellar. And yeah, and then there's another room called an attic. Attic, an attic. This is usually above the house. It's usually maybe on the top floor of your house, you open something in the, in the ceiling and you have to go up some steps and it's very hot up there and it's not, again, people don't usually live there and you can put some stuff up there in the attic and lots of spiders probably. <laughs> uh, great, it, they should just call it a spider room, right? <laughs> okay, I see Eric also wrote study room. Yeah, so some houses might also have a study. We can just call it a study. And so maybe someone's talking, maybe a family's talking, they say, I'm going to the study. And this means the special room for studying for, for school or, and sometimes a study and an office might be like the same it, it's usually the same kind of room right uh they're very similar a study in an office hand good 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 job you wrote guest room yeah a guest room a special room for guests when they come to your house usually this is a special room for guests to sleep in so it's a bedroom it has a bed or sofa or something, and they can sleep in there, and they have some privacy, or in British English, privacy. It's private for them. Uh, great, but I but no one no one wrote my favorite room, the room that I spend a lot of time in, the bathroom. <laughs> 
the bathroom. Yeah, usually we call this the bathroom in our house. Um, in a bathroom, there might be, you know, different types of bathrooms. A bathroom might have, usually a bathroom has a toilet, a special seat to sit on. Some people, as a joke, might call it the throne, like where a king sits. <laughs> Uh, so that usually has a toilet, it might have a bath and a bath. This means a bath tub. When someone says I have a bath in my bathroom, it means I have a bath tub. It's the place where you can lie down. You can sit or you can lie down and you can take a bubble bath. <laughs> you can you can relax right but not all bathrooms have a bathtub sometimes a bathroom has a shower and a shower is like a bathtub but it's a special area where you stand up you stand and you wash yourself in a bathtub you sit or you lie down and you wash yourself. Um, Adan asks, what does bubble mean? So a bubble is like, uh, it's like air inside of water. It looks like a circle. Little children might have something special they can blow. And these little circles of water and air go into the, go into the air, right? This is a bubble. And a uh, bubble bath is a uh, some, for example, children like this. You put some something special in the water when you're taking a bath and there's lots of bubbles everywhere, small circles, right? Um, great. Now, sometimes it's confusing because a bathtub is a special place to sit or to lie down and, and wash yourself. A shower is a special place to stand up and wash yourself. But we also have a verb to take a shower and to take a bath. And so when you take a bath, usually you're sitting down or lying down. When you take a shower, you're standing up. But some bathtubs have a shower head a thing to take a shower. So you can take a shower in a bathtub. Usually there's some kind of shower head. And so you might be in a bathtub, but you can still take a shower in a bathtub. Usually you can't take a bath in a shower though, right? Because all of the water goes down the drain. The water goes down the drain and goes out. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, and bath tubs can be slippery. Bath tubs can be slippery. You can you might stand up and whoa. You might slip in the bathtub. That's right. Great. Okay. So let's see. Do we talk about all the rooms? I mean, those are the main rooms. I'm sure in a in a very big house, you might have different rooms too, some special rooms. Um, like a reading room. Or instead of a living room, some people call it a family room. They'll say, let's go to the family room. This means the living room. There are a few different different names for living room in different places. Um, Omar writes game room. Yeah, you might have a game room, a room that has some games that you can play. A special room just for this. That's true. Oh, um, for example... Oh, yeah. Lena writes reading room or library. Yeah. Some people might call it the library, especially if it's very big. 
Yeah. In my house, that's my office. I just call it my office and that's where I read. That's where I study. That's where I work. But yeah, in a bigger house, that might be a library, like a, a room full of books. Um, in, so in my house, my my daughter has two rooms. She has her bedroom and she has a playroom. It's a room for all of the children's toys. And so she can go in there and play with toys, but she doesn't need to take all of the toys to go to sleep. Um, good. Vlad writes uh, utility room and Anik writes store room. Yeah. So a, a storage <clears throat> storage room or so a storage room. This would be just a room where we keep some things. Um, you might have a special room for this, or maybe you keep things in the closet or the basement or the garage. But maybe you have a special room to store things, to keep things. And this would be a storage room. Yeah. Uh, Vlad wrote utility room. So this is a good, this is good. I didn't even, I didn't think about that before. Uh, the utility room, this might be a special area where there are some big machines that you use for your house, like to make electricity or gas, or some different controls for parts of your house. And usually this would be called the utility room because utilities, utilities, these are the things that you pay for, for your house, like electricity, gas, water. These are called utilities. So um, when the electricity company sends me a letter and says, you need to pay us, this is called a utility bill. And the, the water company, the electric company, they are utility companies. Yeah. So when we talk about those things, they are called utilities. And if you're renting an apartment, for example, you need to pay your rent and utilities. Or maybe when you rent your apartment, the utilities are included in the rent. Right? Okay. Great. Um, Edson wrote yard. Yeah, the yard. The yard is the grassy area around your house. The area with grass. Um, and yeah, you might have a backyard and you might have a front yard and maybe you have a side yard too. In American English, we usually call this yard, the yard. Um, in British English, a lot of times they call it the garden, the garden. Um, yeah, great. There's also a word courtyard. And a courtyard, this is not usually about your house. It may be about some houses, but a courtyard is this open, grassy area in the middle of a building. So maybe you walk in the building, in the house, and then there's a door and you go outside and there's a special area in the middle. And this is a courtyard. Maybe at a big hospital, maybe at an airport, maybe at a big hotel, they'll have a courtyard, some middle or central area where you can walk around. And, and in many cases, this is a green area too. Swimming pool. Yeah, some people have a swimming pool in their house. I don't know if that's a room. Maybe if you when you go underwater, it feels like you're in a room. But uh, yeah, swimming pool is another thing that you might have at your house. Great. So these are different rooms. Great. We talked about, oh, one, one that we didn't talk about. 
the hallway, the hallway, or just the hall. So this is the area between the rooms, right? So if we have one room here and one room here, there might be a little place to walk from one room to the next room. This is the hallway, or we can just say the hall. Great. Okay. Uh, oh, I guess when you first enter the house, sometimes there's... Uh, a special area, right? And so when you when you enter the house, a lot of people just call it the entrance. Some people will call it a uh, foyer. And some people have other words that they call this too. But this there's a special word foyer. I think this is French. Um and so this is about the special area when you enter the house, right? I usually just say entrance or I just say by the door <laughs> because in my house, it's not a special room. It's part of a big hallway. Okay, great. Um, so next, let's talk about Another thing that's really important that a lot of people make mistakes with. So maybe your house has more than one level, right? So there's two different words that we talk about, that, that we use when we talk about different levels of a building, not just a house, but any building. We can say floor, but we can also say story. Floor and story. This talks about levels of a house. Usually, we use the we use the word floor when we're talking about where something is located. When we talk about where it is, so for example, my office is on the second floor of my house. My bedroom is on the first floor. But when we talk about how many levels there are in general, in total, then we usually use the word story. So we can say, my office is on the second floor. My bedroom is on the first floor. I live in a two-story house. I live in a two-story house. We don't usually say two-floor house. We say two-story house. When we're talking about how many levels, we say story. So maybe in your office building, maybe you can say it is a 10-story building. My office is on the fifth floor. Right? So when we talk about how many there are, we usually say story. When we talk about where something is located, we usually say floor. That's confusing, so it's important to know. Uh, great. Okay. So now I want you to think about which room in the house is your favorite. Which room do you spend the most time in? And you don't have to write it in the chat. We'll go to the breakout rooms and speak about this right now. So which room in your house is your favorite? Which room? do you spend the most time in? This is our question. Okay, so on the screen right now, you should see a button. Just click the button to join this room. And we're going to answer the questions, which room in your house is your favorite and which room do you spend the most time in? Great. Okay. And for everybody who's watching on YouTube or who might watch this later, today we're, we have our live lesson inside of our English Everyday program. 
And English Every Day is a special speaking program where students can join lessons every day. Right now, we have about 150 lessons every month. Today's lesson is also on YouTube. And that's why in today's lesson, I'm presenting more information and we're speaking a little bit less than usual. But these are speaking lessons. And so usually, two, three times every lesson, we go to the breakout rooms. And that's where all of the students are right now. The breakout rooms are a special area where you can speak in a small group, three, four, sometimes five students, and they speak about a special topic. And then the teacher goes into each room and checks and speaks with those students. So this is a great time to practice speaking. In our normal lessons that happen that aren't on YouTube, we practice speaking a lot more. The teacher speaks with students in the main room and in the breakout rooms. Because we're on YouTube, we're limited because you're just watching and you can't speak on YouTube. But you probably want to speak English because probably you can find grammar information on the internet. Probably you can watch YouTube videos and learn new vocabulary. Probably you can find pronunciation rules and you can practice in the mirror. But speaking is something you have to do with real people. So you can practice speaking with me and other native professional teachers and with students from around the world who are serious about learning English. That's what happens in the English Everyday program. So if you're interested in that, I'll post the link here in the chat on YouTube. Speak with us every day here. There's the link. And I hope to see you at the next lesson. Now, maybe you're watching this YouTube channel or this YouTube video because you want to improve English for your career, for your job, for your profession. And maybe you work in an international company or a multinational organization. And English is the language of communication that you need to use with clients, with colleagues, or with your boss. If that's who you are, if, if that's the situation that you're in, and you want to use English to take your career to the next level, then we have a special program for you. This program is designed to help you move to the next level in your job, in your career. It's designed to help you increase your salary because learning English is not just about repeating words or knowing rules. So many people spend a lot of time and money learning English, studying English at different schools with different teachers, different programs, and then they don't apply English to their life and to their work. I think that's a big mistake. That's why I created the Level Up program. And so I'm going to give you that link too. So here in the chat is the link to the Level Up program. And actually, there's a short video that you can watch when you click this link. And it will tell you if you're right for the Level Up program or not, because it will tell you what we do in the program, and it will explain who should be in the program and who should not. This is, an, this is a high-level program. You should be intermediate, upper intermediate, or advanced already. And we're really going to help you specialize your English and create presentations, reports, projects, communicate with professional people so that you can turn your English into a better job, a higher position, higher salary. So if that's what you're interested in, then I'm going to send the link here. Okay, so you have both the links. Again, the difference between these two programs is Level Up is for professionals. It's for people who want to take their career to the next level. And English Every Day is just a speaking practice program. It's a great program. There's so much practice. You have 24-7 chat, 24-7 live room. You can post about what's happening in the lessons. You can connect with all of the other members. You can join lessons every day, about five lessons every day right now. 
there's a lot of options in there. So you'll definitely improve your speaking if that's what you want. Um, so you have those two options, speaking program, English every day, or professional career development level up. Excellent. So thanks so much for being here and watching this YouTube video with me. Very soon, I'm going to bring all of the students back from the breakout rooms, and we're going to continue talking about rooms in a house and things that you can find in the house. And I hope that this lesson really helps you learn some new vocabulary and how to use this vocabulary to talk about your house. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Now, let's bring everyone back from the breakout rooms. I'm going to tell them right now that we have one more minute. We have one more minute until the breakout rooms are finished. All right, great. So while we're waiting for everyone to come back from the breakout rooms, you can write in the chat on YouTube. Tell me what you would like to learn about because this can help me understand what lessons we should make in the future. And by the way, the future English lessons that you see on this channel are going to include other teachers too. So sometimes you'll see me on the lessons and sometimes you'll see other teachers. And I think that's great so that you can hear different accents and understand different ways of speaking. All right, I see in the chat on YouTube, uh, English Everyday Speaking course. Yeah, it's not for everyone. If you really want to improve your speaking, it's for you. Maria says, thank you very much. Your videos are so helpful. Well, thank you so much, Maria, for watching. Okay, looks like uh, almost everyone is back from the breakout rooms now. So, Adrian, hi, welcome back. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, what is your favorite room? My favorite room is um, in the same time kitchen and uh, living room. Kitchen because uh, there I have uh, ac access to um, the terrace, uh, sailing, and it's a pleasure to great time to there with cup of tea, coffee, and at the same time I like <laughs> so much uh, the living room because I, there I have uh, more space, uh, hang out. Uh, time with my uh, friends there, I playing with daughter there, um, it's a pleasure, gaming, uh, TV, yes, yes, uh, this is the, the, the ball, my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so uh, in your living room, is the TV the, the center yes. of the living room? Yes, okay, furniture for the living and the TV, and uh, that is a, a, a pleasure. And um, I have a um, few, few things. And uh, for this reason, I have more, uh, more space there. OK. A small uh, table and some others and just um, a bed with uh, like the corner bed, uh, for example. It's just, um, it's cozy. <laughs> OK, cool. With, with some uh, pillar there. With some but pillows? Pill pillows, but uh, some uh, different design for the living, of course. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you. people in their living room have, for example, a TV, a sofa, or couch, so, and then a small table in front of the couch, in front of the sofa. Yeah, the same. You have the same sofa. Sofa is correctly word. Um, <laughs> it's in the right on the on the corner. And uh, near the window, window the, the same is in the corner, a small table um, in front. And uh, of course, that in the front, uh, another uh, furniture, TV, and uh, can see the stairs. Okay. The, uh, left, uh, right. Yeah, so yes. usually, usually um, this small, low table that we have in front of the sofa in the living room, we call it a coffee table coffee table yes, yes yeah people yes. call it a coffee <laughs> table the same it's small it's low it's yes like for coffee and then maybe you have some bigger furniture and your tv sits inside of this furniture or sits on the shelf 
Yeah, the, it's all very, very low just for the TV and uh, very, very easy. It's minimalist style, for example. And, and uh, I have some uh, picture, uh, so cavans, some uh, photo, like a picture, practically. A canvas? Canvas, mm -hmm. yes, yes. I like this uh, portrait canvas. Is uh, well, my pleasure. It's great, great. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> some people have their television inside of a big piece of furniture, sometimes it, with doors that open, and or sometimes it's it's open already and you can see the TV, but maybe with some other doors that have other things inside. And usually we call this an entertainment center entertainment center so when we go to a shop and we buy this piece of furniture for the television and and for the living room you might call it an entertainment center yeah and then we have that low table called a coffee table even if you don't drink coffee people usually call it a coffee table um probably all of you who are here and everyone who's watching, you have you probably have seen uh, or have watched a television show called Friends. It's a famous show. Lots of people who are learning English watch it. Um, well, earlier than Friends, before Friends, there was another funny comedy show that was very similar. It was called... Seinfeld. Seinfeld. It's also it, it's also in New York, also with a group of friends living in New York, uh, doing some funny things. And I recommend watching it. It's older than Friends, but it's funny. And in one episode uh, in this show called Seinfeld, one of the friends writes a book and the book is about coffee tables. It just has pictures of different coffee tables. So it's a coffee table and it's a special book that you can put on your coffee table. So when your friends come to your house, they can open this book and read it. So it's a coffee table book about coffee tables. And then the book has legs that open on the bottom. So the book can be a coffee table. So you can put your coffee on top of the book. <laughs> uh, John, yeah, Kramer. This is the character. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Uh, Loli, how, what about you? Um, what's your favorite room of the house? Hi, Chris. Hi. Um, I think uh, the living room, because I have a sofa. I can read. I like reading a lot. And uh, it's my favorite uh, room. But here in my office, my stu studio, uh, yeah, I think I just spend a lot of time and it's very comfortable for me. Uh, I do a lot of things here. Yeah. Great. So that's that's interesting. We didn't talk about studio and this is another type of room that someone might have in a house. So for you, Loli, what's the difference between a studio and an office? I think a studio... You can study, you can do, uh, maybe an office is only work, it's only work. Uh, you arrive uh, at home and maybe you have to do something for your job, your work, and uh, it's, it's, it's the office, it's the office because you work. But I think here in the past I worked, yeah, because I was a teacher 
mm -hmm. and uh, uh, very important for me. Very, uh, yeah. But uh, I studio here. Uh, sometimes I read. Uh, sometimes I phone. Uh, or I call my friends. So I think uh, it's uh, different. A studio and office. Yeah. Usually, usually when I think of a studio or when someone tells me they have a, a studio in their house, I think that they do some kind of art or creative work. Mm -hmm. And because we have an office for work, we have a, a study for studying, we have a library for reading or a reading room, but a studio like if somebody makes YouTube videos or something, maybe they have some lights, a camera. This is like a studio or someone who's a painter. Yeah. They, they have a studio, a special room for painting or yeah. a photographer. A photographer might have a studio. Yeah. So some kind of creative room. Yeah. Or maybe you write. Write something, yeah, a book, uh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. do you think you're a creative person? Uh, I had made a dollhouse, yeah, it's <laughs> and uh, I have uh, uh, nowadays some furniture for the house doing a lot of things that we, maybe the blinds or uh, uh, both for the house, I think is my, <laughs> my hobby. That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Awesome. Thank you, Lily. My pleasure. So we're talking about different things in the house right now. And one word that we keep saying is the word furniture right? Furniture. And so furniture is usually something in the house. It takes, it's usually big, but not always, but it's something that we don't move a lot, right? Like a sofa is a piece of furniture. Now, did you hear what I said? I said a piece of furniture. I didn't say one furniture because the word furniture is uncountable. So we cannot say furnitures. We cannot say furnitures. We have to say furniture or one piece of furniture. So for example, my bookshelf or some people might call it a bookcase. My bookshelf is a piece of furniture. It's, it's big, it's difficult to move. My desk, my, oh, you can't see it. <laughs> my desk is a piece of furniture. My chair maybe is a piece of furniture. So they're, things that usually stay in one place in the room and we don't usually move them uh, a lot. You can, but you don't do it very often, right? This is furniture. A bed is a piece of furniture, but also furniture is something that is not connected to the house, like a toilet. Right? A, a toilet, you don't move the toilet because you have to change the pipes that connect to the toilet. You have to change the plumbing. The plumbing. The plumbing is the system of pipes that go, that take the water out, right? So it connects to your shower, your bath, your toilet, your sink. This is the plumbing, the plumbing system of your house. If you need to fix this, maybe you can do it yourself if you're a big, strong man. I'm not. 
So I call somebody. He's a plumber. A plumber. He understands the plumbing system. And so he can fix these things. Uh, so in this word, plumber, notice how we how we write it, how we spell it. P-L-U-M-B-E-R. But we do not say B. We do not say plumber. No, we say plumber and plumbing, the plumbing system. We don't pronounce B. Yeah, so if we need to fix something connected to the, the water system, the plumbing system, then we can call a plumber. If we need to fix something connected to the electrical system, the wires that are in the walls, the wires, then we need to call an electrician. An electrician. This person fixes the electrical system in the house. Again, maybe you're smart enough to do it yourself. I'm not. So, so I, uh, I call people. Um, great. Let's go to John. Hey, John. Hi. Hi, Chris. How are you today? Yeah, pretty good. Thanks. Where are you joining us from? Colombia. Colombia. So are you John or Juan? John. John? John Alexander. <laughs> okay. And um, what's your favorite room in the house? Um, yeah, it's my bedroom. Because bedroom. On, on my bedroom, I have one, my working area here mm -hmm. to my bedroom. So most of the time, uh, I stay in my bedroom working. And additionally, on my bedroom, I see some... I watch some series on TV uh, and, and rest on my bedroom, on my bedroom. Yeah. Do you um, have a small table next to your bed? Uh, yeah, yeah, I have a small table where normally I work with my computer there. So is it... Is it where you is that where you are now? No. It's a different table. It's not the desk. Uh, no, it's not a desk. It's a table on the wall. A long table on, on the wall. And yeah, it's a kind of desk. Okay. I know in some some people have so a small table next to their bed and they can put maybe a glass of water there or they can put their wallet or they can put their phone and we call this a bedside table bedside table okay yeah okay what else do you have in your bedroom uh what what okay. what <laughs> sorry yeah what else what else ah okay what else i have my closet mm -hmm. my closet and, and and additionally my bedroom has his own bathroom into oh, my great. bedroom yeah it's other it's other room but it's into my bedroom mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I have a TV on the wall. Oh, cool. A, a, win, a window. A window. Okay, so where I can see. Yeah. When you when you go to sleep, is the window open or is it closed? No, it's closed because uh, I don't like to see the, the light from from out to my bedroom on, on the morning. Yeah. So maybe you put something 
over the yeah. window. You cover the window with something. Is it, yeah. so we might have a curtain or we might have blinds or shades. There's probably another mm -hmm. word too. So a curtain usually has two, two pieces and you can move it like this and close it. No, like, it's something I move, uh, I uh -huh. do something here and he so, uh, up or down. Yeah. yeah, right. So this is probably blinds or shades. Mm -hmm. Good job. Great. Um, there's also something called shutters. And shutters, shutters, usually these go on the the outside. Yeah. So what's the difference between uh, blinds and shades? Blinds, usually you you pull something and they open up like this. So you have lots of lots of them, one, two, three, four. They go up. And when you you can turn something and they they can close or they can open like that. No. And shades, they're just one thing that fall that comes down and you pull something and it goes yeah. up and pull something this, and it goes down. This is one of this kind. Okay. Yeah. And there's different there's different types of blinds and shades. So, you know, a lot of people don't really care what the difference is. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thank, okay. you, Thank you, John. Thank you, Tisha. Uh excellent. So are there any other questions for today? There are lots of things, there's lots of stuff in our houses. We could talk forever about all of the different things that we have in our houses, right? Um, but maybe you have some other questions, maybe about this topic, maybe about something else in English. If you have any questions right now, write your question in the chat or click the raise hand button and ask your question. And I'll try to answer right now before we finish. I see a question on YouTube about two words the word man and the word men, man and men. So that's M-A-N, man, and, and M-E-N, men, men. It's a shorter sound. The difference is one man, two men. When you use the letter E, this is more than one. And when you use the letter A, it's just one. One man, two men. It's not correct to say man's or men's. We don't, we don't use S for this word. It's different from other words. One man, two men. Good question. Other questions? Omar. Hi. Hello, Chris. Hello. How, How are, are you? you? Good. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, I have a small question. It's not related to, to our topic today. Okay. Uh, but in general, uh, if I want to, to talk about the past, uh, and I, I, I use any kind of verb, but I don't know its, its form in the past. Should I say that plus uh, verb in infinitive? For example, if I want to say, um, I played with my friend yesterday. If I don't know the past form of the verb play, should I say, uh, I did play with my friend yesterday? Is it correct? No. Play... So if you use the, if you don't know the past form, yeah, add ed, and ninety five percent of the time you'll be right. <laughs> I mean, not ninety five percent, but most most of the time you'll be right. 
So okay. this is uh, this is actually how children learn. Like my my daughter, she doesn't know all the past forms of verbs yet in English, and so she'll she'll hear a word and she'll just add ed, and sometimes it's not correct because she just learned she just understood this simple rule. Usually we add ed. So, so this works the same. Like a person will understand that you're trying to say the past, even if it's wrong. Yeah. Okay. So in the worst case, I add ed, not uh, that plus verb in infinite. Right. Right. Because when you add did and then the infinitive, it can have other meanings. Like usually we, we will do this when we want to stress the positive aspect of this verb. Like, like, for example, someone, Mike says, Chris, did you finish your work? Yeah, I finished it. What? You didn't finish it? I did finish it. Okay, okay. This yeah, I understood. When we usually use did and infinitive to stress that it's the positive form of the, of the verb. I did. Or as yeah, a help. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Understood. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good question. I haven't heard that one before. Um, cool. Any other questions before we finish? All right. Looks like there aren't any other questions for today. Thank you so much for coming to the lesson. I'll see everybody next time. And... You know, in, in our English Everyday program, we have another lesson coming very soon. So uh, we'll see you there. Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye.